Michelle, welcome back to my channel. Today is an unhaul. Um, you will maybe notice I haven't done an unhaul on my channel in a while. Um, I felt very conflicted about doing them because there was a lot of conversations about consumerism in booktube and you probably know that I buy a lot of books. <laughs> um, which is my right as a human with money to buy books um so i don't know um but i like doing unhauls and hauls obviously so we're gonna do it um i will let you know that my pango books is in my description down below and all of these books are on my pango books i sell them pretty cheap and um ship them super fast so we're gonna do this in two sections the first section is the books that i have read and i'm getting rid of and the ones that i have not read and i'm getting rid of i just did like a deep dive of my shelves and I'll, if it's been on my shelves since like before i moved to maryland it had to go so let's do this i'm gonna try to make this as short as possible the first one is gone girl by jillian flynn i read this in Maryland um I literally this is the only book I threw a I threw it against the wall in the middle if you know you know um but I don't think I could read it again um I don't think I could because it's I read it once and it was so good and now I know um also this is probably the best movie adaption that I've ever seen I'll probably just watch the movie if I do that so it's going Next is something that I read for the Alphabet Project, and that's Gem and Dixie by Sarah Zar. Um, I like this. I didn't love this. I'm not going to read this again. It has to go. Next is an ARC, so I'm not selling this. I'm going to put this in a little free library somewhere, but it's in my pile, so here it is. This is Wildcat by Amelia Morris. I read this um, for a book review I did for my local city's paper. I'll put it down below if you want to read it. Next is something that I DNF technically... <laughs> I still kind of read it. That's a Raging Quiet. I read this, read this for book club. It's historical fiction. It's just not my thing. Um, so getting rid of it. Next is something that I read so long ago and it's historical fiction that I loved, but I don't think I would ever want to read it again because it was so depressing. And that is Salt to the Sea by Rudo Sepides. I have not read another Rudo Sepides. I honestly don't think I could. This was emotionally devastating and Every time I look at it on my shelves, I'm like, God, I love that book, but I never want to look at it again. It's going. Next is something that I read a really long time ago when I first moved here, and it was a debut, and I met the author, and it was just okay. Like, it's a good debut novel. It's signed, now that I'm seeing that. Um, this is If Birds Fly Back by Carly Zarasiak. I really like this author, like, as a person. I follow her still on Instagram. I think she follows me back because I met her, um, but she has moved into middle grade and children's books, and I just, I feel like I've read this. I don't need it anymore. Next, in next two, I'll just put these together. Um, it's something that I read and really liked, which is weird for me, but it's Wild Card and, uh, Warcross? Warcross and Wild Card? <laughs> okay. Um, I actually read Wild Card as an ARC and then got a signed edition, and I've never cracked it open, and this one I read for a book club five years ago, and haven't picked it up since, so I feel like if I were gonna reread it, I would just listen to the audiobook, so let's make room on my shelf. Next is something that I read, I'm not even kidding, in a day. That's Big Little Lies. <laughs> um, this is obviously the what is it, pocket paperback with the TV series. I loved this. I absolutely love this, but I'm not going to read it again because I know what happened. Next is something that I've had on my shelves for so long, and I don't even know if I have read this exact copy, but that's Every Day by David Levithan. I love this for what it was six years ago, but I'm never going to pick it up again. Next is something that I just DNF'd, <laughs> and that's Lucky Leap Day by Anne Marie Walker. I did not like this. The cute little cover with the dog got me. I don't think the story was good, the direction it was going in, not for me. Next is something that I read and actually liked, but I own the audiobook on Audible, so if I were to read it again, I would do it on Audible, and that's Deposing Nathan by Zach Smedley. We actually went to the same college, so that's cool, our little connection, and I really liked this book. It's a heavy YA. I just would pick it up with the audiobook that I own. Um, 
And next is When We Collided by Emery Lord. This is a story that I read a long time ago, right when I was diagnosed with my mental illness. And the mental illness is in this book as well. And I did not like the representation at all, but I felt like I had to keep it for reasons. And that's not true, so it's going. Next is a book that I actually gave five stars to, but I'm gonna let go because it's it's the same, it feels the same as Salt to the Sea. Like it was so emotionally damaging. I physically cannot pick it up ever again. And that's Orphan Train by Christina Baker Klein. I love this book so much, but like when I look at it, it just causes emotional damage and I just can't pick it up. Someone else gets emotional damage, it's not me. Also, um, the next one, The Art of Racing in the Rain. If you've read this, you are emotionally damaged now, so I, I don't ever want to read it again, even though I loved it. It has to go. Next is a book that I also love, but I'll never pick up again, and that's All in Pieces by Suzanne Young. Um, this is Suzanne Young's like only young adult contemporary, and I actually really liked it, and it came out Election Day 2016, which was a clusterfuck. So I felt really bad for her, but I actually really like this book. I'm just not gonna read it again. Um, this is the same thing. That's Suicide Notes from Beautiful Girls by Lynn Weingarten. I really, really like this, but it's like a YA thriller and you get to the end and you know. I've had this on my shelves for so long. I did like this, but I'm just not gonna read it again. If I haven't read it by now again, I'm not gonna read it again. Um, next is the series. Hold on. That is the Delirium series by Lauren Oliver. Um, I met Lauren Oliver at Y'all Fest the first year that I went, I think in 2017, and she was really cool. Um, but uh, this is like the only series by her that I've actually liked. I just don't think I like her as a writer. Um, so I'm not gonna read these again. I feel like if I were to reread these again, they would not be five stars like they were all those years ago. So I just gotta go. Next is something that I did for the Alphabet Project, and that is The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. I asked my husband if he wanted to keep it too because he read it as well, and he said no, and it's because it's emotionally damaging. This book is so sad. There is nothing happy about this book, and we don't want to keep it. Next is something I DNF'd, and that is Girl Out of Water by Laura Silverman. This is for the Alphabet Project, I, and this was too young YA. The MC was so annoying. Next is Made You Up by Francesca Zappia. I really liked this when I read it, but it's been on my shelves for years and years and years and years. And I've never picked it up again, and it's just, it has to go. I'm not going to pick it up again. Next is something I recently read, and that is The Heart Principle by Helen Huang. Um, not my favorite. I ended up giving it three stars, which isn't bad. Actually, a friend gave me this one because she didn't like it, and I thought that I would like it, and I didn't like it either, so um, we both didn't like it. But... I didn't buy this one, so that's good. Next is Vampires, Hearts, and Other Dead Things by Margie Fustin. I just read this. I gave it four stars. There was absolutely nothing wrong with it. I'm just not going to pick it up again, so I'm not going to keep it. Next is a graphic novel that I read for my book club, and that's Dancing at the Pity Party by Tyler Fetter. This was so sad. I don't want it on my shelves. I'm never going to read it again. The artwork is amazing, and if you want to be sad, you can buy it. <laughs> Next is something that I read when Castleman chose my TBR, and that is If You Come Softly by Jacqueline Woodson. I really, really like this one, but I listened to the audiobook, and if I wanted to read it again, I would listen to that same audiobook. Next is a book set of Hunger Games. Listen, I got these because they were brand spanking new, and I really thought I liked that, but I have like my worn out copies from like 10 years ago, more than 10 years ago. I don't know, like 15 years ago, that are just like so nice and worn out and floppy that I would rather read than these new ones that are not floppy. Next is On the Come Up by Angie Thomas. I listened to this audiobook and I really like the narrator because they actually like wrapped the songs that Angie wrote, but I think I would pick it up again on the audiobook because of that and I just don't need it on my shelves. Next is Every Moment After by Joseph Moldover. I read this for the Alphabet Project. Nothing happened in this book. Um, this is, I looked him up and he's like a child psychiatrist and he decided that he could write a book for young adults about the aftermath of a high school shooting and he couldn't, he couldn't. Nothing happened. Next is Down and Across by Arvin Ahmadi. I believe this is their debut. Um, it was fine. I think I gave it three stars, but I just wouldn't pick this up again. 
Next is Finding Yvonne um, by Brandi Colbert. I actually ended up giving this five stars in the Alphabet Project, but I decided ultimately to get this off my shelves because it does deal with pregnancy, which I personally never want to read about. So I'm going to get rid of it. And then uh, also by Brandi Colbert is Point. Um, this is her debut. I got this off Book Outlet and they fucked up the cover so much and still sent it to me. It was probably a dollar, so whatever. Um, I really liked this book. Um, it was a little confusing, <laughs> um, but I thought it was a good debut. It's just not something I would read again. And last but not least from books that I have read is Everything That Makes You by Mariah McStay. I read this for the Alphabet Project. This is um, kind of like Taylor Jenkins' read Maybe in Another Life. Um, I thought it was good, but it wasn't great, and also maybe in another life was better. So there's that. I have to fix these piles. Okay, now, for these next books, the explanation is simple about why I'm getting rid of them. I'm not going to read them. Um, that's it. So I'm just going to show them to you, and you can buy them if you want. Here we go. The Smell of Other People's Houses by Bonnie Sue Hitchcock. The Rules of Magic by Alice Hoffman. Everyone We've Been by Sarah Everett. Remember Me Like This by Brett Anthony Johnson. Did I Mention I Love You by Estelle Mascamas. Here We Are Now by Jasmine Warga. Sing Unburied Sing by Jasmine Ward. None of the Above by I.W. Gr Gregorio. A Girl Like That by Tanaz Bethina. When You Were Here by Daisy Whitney. Love and First Sight by Josh Sun. Sun Sunduisk? Someone Else's Summer by Rachel Bateman. The Last Forever by Deb Coletti. The Curious Incident of the Dog in the in the Nighttime by Mark Haddon. The Rules Do Not Apply by Ariel Levy. Levy? The Memory Book by Laura Avery. Americana by Chikamanda Ngozi Adishi. The Great American Whatever by Tim Federal. My Husband's Wife by Jane Corey. What Happens Now by Jennifer Castle. Violent Ends, this is multiple authors that I'm not gonna say, but it is told in the point of view of the shooter and people in the school. This sounds so depressing, I don't wanna read that. The Girl with the Red Balloon by Katherine Locke. Girls Burn Brighter by Shoba Rao. Foiled by Heather Cox and Jessica Morgan. The Kissing Booth by Beth Riekels. The Numbers Game by Danielle Steele. Wanderlust, also by Daniel Steele. Seven Ways We Lie by Riley Redgate. You see that? Sorry. With Open Arms by Nora Roberts. At the Edge of the Universe by Sean David Hutchinson. Where'd You Go, Bernadette by Maria Semple. Serafina and the Black Cloak by Robert Beatty. The Unwanted by Lisa McMahon. Come Back to Be by Mila Gray. The Siren by Kira Cass. Mr. Penumbra's 24-Hour Bookstore by Robin Sloan. The Art of Arranging Flowers by Lynn Brennard. And Follow Me Back by A.V. Geiger. The Good Girl by Mary Kubica. Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwong. Remember Me Always by Renee Collins. The Girls by Emma Klein. Noteworthy by Riley Redgate. The Things I've Done by Rebecca Phillips. Fake It Till You Break It by Jen P. Nugent. Vanishing Girls by Lauren Oliver. 359 by Gretchen McNeil. A Short History of the Girl Next Door by Jared Reck. How to Disappear by Sharon Huss Rote. Call Down the Hawk by Maggie Stiefvater. The Book of Longings by Sumon Kidd. The Selection Stories by Kiera Cass. All We Could Have Been by T.E. Carter. Avoid the Size of the World by Rachel Alpine. The Hidden Memory of Objects by Daniel Magus Amato. Freshman by Tom Ellen and Lucy Iveson. Sad Perfect by Stephanie Elliott. And last but not least is Little, nope, Lucky Little Things by Janice Erbaum. That's it. I'm getting rid of a lot. I have brought a lot in. Will I stop buying books? No. <laughs> um, so that's it. That's my own haul. It is quite big. I'm hoping to sell these on Pango. If I don't sell them on Pango in like six to nine months, then I will go to my local McKay's and they will take them and I'll get more money to buy books. So thanks for watching my video. See you in my next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.